Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Serpros. In this video, we're going to be getting started with probably the most valuable and important network study tool, Cisco Packet Tracer. If you're new here, this channel uploads regular IT training videos just like this one. So if you like what you see here today, don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up. So what is Cisco Packet Tracer? Packet Tracer is a network simulation tool designed by Cisco that gives you the ability to go out and build and design your own computer networks. Not only that, but it gives you the ability to visually play with networking technologies and protocols. It's an incredible study tool, and it's vital if you're taking your Cisco CCNA. But the best part, it's absolutely free. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download, install, and use this fantastic tool. So before we do anything, we're going to need to download and install it. To do this, we need to navigate to the Cisco Networking Academy website, which is netacad.com. Now, if you already have an account with Netacad, then go ahead and log in now. Otherwise, we need to go up to Courses at the top of the screen, then down to Packet Tracer. Cisco has an introduction course to Packet Tracer, which we need to sign up for before we can download it. So we need to scroll down here and where it says Intro to Packet Tracer, click Learn More. So here is the course we need to sign up for, but we don't actually have to take it. We simply need to scroll down and click Sign Up Today. To enroll, we need to enter our details. Create account. Now we've enrolled, Cisco has sent us an email to activate our account. So this is the email we receive. All we have to do is click Activate Account. Once we do this, it's going to prompt us to set a password. So we'll just type in a password here and click Create My Account. So one more step is going to ask us for a bit more information and we'll just fill that out very quickly. And once we've done, click Create Account. And finally, we have our account. Now from here, we could launch the course, but for now, we're just going to close this box. To download Packet Tracer, we now need to go up to Resources at the top and then Download Packet Tracer. This will take us to the download page. Now, if we scroll down, we will see the installation options. So it does support Windows, Ubuntu, and Mac OS. We're running Windows, so I'm going to select the 64-bit downloader. Now, Packet Tracer isn't a big application, but it may take a moment just to download. OK, so it's been a minute or two, and our file has downloaded. So we'll just simply double click onto that file and start the installation. Now I'm going to assume you've installed a program before and essentially it's going to be a next, next, next install. Again, it's not a big program, but it will take a minute to install. And now it's done, we'll just click finish and launch Cisco Packet Tracer. So when Packet Tracer opens, you're going to need to sign in. It gives you two options to do this, but we're going to select the Networking Academy login, which we just set up. So we'll just sign in with our credentials and enter our password. And we're in. So now we have Packet Tracer installed and set up. Let's take a look around. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to go through every single menu and every single feature because I'll bore you half to death. But I will point out some of the most important features. The first bit we'll look at is the device menu. Down here in the bottom left corner, we have all of the devices that we can use. Across the top, we have the main categories. Across the bottom, we have the subcategories. And to the right, we have the available devices based on the category we select. There's also a search bar here in the middle. 
we currently have the networking devices selected. Under that, we have routers, switches, hubs, wireless devices, security devices, and wide area network devices as well. The next category is end devices. Here we have the normal devices you would expect, like PCs and laptops. But we also have some IoT devices, which can be found under home, small city, and industrial, and power grid. Another category that contains IoT type devices is the components category. Here you'll find boards, LEDs, buttons, and more. Now the next category is a very important one. This is the connections category. This is how we'll connect all of our devices together. Here we have connection types from straight through cables, crossover cables, to coax and serial cables as well. Now, if you're not sure what type of cable you should be using, don't worry, we also have an auto option as well. Now, to select a device, we simply choose a category. I'll choose networking devices and then routers. Then we just select the device and we can drag that onto the workspace. Or we can simply click on the device and then click where we want the device to be added. That brings us nicely on to the workspace. This is where we'll be building our network topologies. We have two options, the logical view and the physical view. What you see now is the logical view, which is where we'll be spending most of our time. But we can change to the physical view by simply clicking physical at the top left. The physical view gives us a nice visual representation of the networks we build. You start off in the intercity view, and we can click down into the home city, even into the corporate office, and even into the wiring closet that we can see here. And if you look closely, we can see the routers we just added. The buttons at the top right allows us to navigate through the different levels. This view is great if you want to get a realistic view of how networks look and connect together. However, most of our time will be spent in the logical view. To go back to the logical view, we just need to go up to logical in the top left corner. So let's take a quick look at the toolbar at the top. Here we have the select tool for selecting devices, the inspect tool, which is a way to see basic information like routing tables quickly and easily. We have the delete tool, the resize tool for resizing shapes, the place note tool so we can add text to our diagrams. And then we have some drawing tools such as the line, rectangle, ellipse, and free form. The last tools are PDU tools, which allows us to add data to our networks for quick connectivity tests. Okay, so that is enough theory. Let's delete these routers that we have here and build our first network. So I'll click and drag to select the devices. I'm just gonna hit delete on the keyboard. And yes, I want to delete my routers. So now we're gonna need some devices. And I'm going to start off with some PCs. So I'm going to go down to the end devices menu. And I'm going to select the PC and click onto the workspace. I'm going to add another one, simply click PC and again, click onto the workspace. Now I want to switch to connect these PCs. So I'll go to network devices and select switches. Now I could select a model here, but if you don't mind which model, you can simply drag from the subcategory onto the workspace. Great, now we just need to connect these devices together. To do this, we need to go to the connections menu. And in this case, I'm gonna be using straight through copper cables. So I select my PC, choose which interface to connect it to. So this one is gonna be fast ethernet zero and then select it on the switch as well. Again, fast ethernet zero slash one. Now remember, if you don't know which cable you should be using, for the time being, you can simply click the auto tool, click the PC, and then click the switch, and it will automatically select the correct cable for you. 
So now we have our devices. What now? Well, we need to configure them. To do this, we just need to single click on each device. So I'll start with PC0, single click, and it's gonna open up a new window. On this screen, we get a visual representation of the device. As you can see here, we clearly have a PC straight out of the 90s, complete with what looks like to be a floppy disk drive as well. Here we can add and remove different modules. The available modules can be seen here on the left. If you click on the modules, you get a nice description at the bottom as to what they do. It's important to note that if you want to add or remove a module, you first need to power down the device. So for example, if I scroll down and I take this ethernet module, and I try to remove it by simply dragging it to the left, it's gonna give me a warning saying it can't be removed until the device is powered down. The way you would do that is simply by clicking the power button. Now, while this seems like a nice feature, trust me, once the novelty wears off, this can get pretty annoying. The next tab we have is the config tab. Here we can configure some of the device settings, such as the display name and some of the interface settings as well. The desktop tab is where we see all of the available features for our PC. We have things like the command prompt, the web browser, email, lots of things here but the one we're gonna use is the IP configuration. Here we can set the IP address of this PC. So I'm gonna set an IP address of 192.168.0.1. And if we click onto the subject mask, it should auto populate for us. Now we have the IP address, I'm gonna do the same on the next PC. So I'll close this window down. Again, single click on PC one, go over to the desktop tab, IP configuration, and this time we're gonna go 192.168.0.2. And again, auto-populate the subnet mask. Once we've done that, we'll just close this window down. Now we can also configure our switch, and this is really where the magic happens in Cisco Packet Tracer. So if we click on our switch, we get a new window. Again, we get a nice physical representation of the device and any available modules. If we click the config tab, here we can make some quick and simple configuration changes. We also have the CLI tab, and this is where you'll be spending 99% of your time. This is where we interact and configure our network devices, which at the end of the day is why we're all here. We'll look at this more as we go forward, but I won't dive into this right now. The last thing I want to show you is probably my favorite feature of Packet Tracer, and that is the simulation mode. Simulation mode allows us to visually see messages being sent across the network. It's really a great tool when learning how protocols work and behave. The button to enable simulation mode is down here in the bottom right, and we just have to click simulation. When we turn on simulation mode, this new panel appears. Here we can see each event as and when it happens. By default, every available event type is selected, which if you leave them all on, you can quickly start to get overwhelmed by the number of messages being sent, especially when we start to build bigger networks. So what we want to do instead is to click the show all slash none button to deselect all of those event types. Then if we go to edit filters, we can select which type of event we want to see. For this example, I'm just going to go ahead and select the ICMP message type. Once I've selected that, I just close this window. And as we can see, only ICMP event types are selected. Now we have that selected, let's go over to PC0. And I'm going to open the command prompt. To demonstrate this, I'm going to send a ping to PC1. So I'll type ping. 192.168.0.2, which is the IP address of PC1. And I'll press enter. Now I'll minimize this. And now we start to see these little envelopes. These envelopes are the protocol messages. We can click on the envelopes and get some information about the message. So on the first screen, we get to see some reference to the OSI model. But if we click onto the 
outbound PDU details, we get to see all of the information about this message. We can make this bigger. We can see the source IP address, the destination IP address, and then we see the ICMP message. This will come in very handy when we start to look at network protocols and how they work. We can close this message and then start to play the scenario through. So we could either hit the play button in the middle, or we can do it step by step by clicking the forward button. So we can see the message being forwarded to the switch, the switch then forwarding it to PC1, and we can see PC1's reply. Again, we can click on these envelopes and see the information being sent. If we click onto the details and expand this, we get to see the structure of the frame. Note the source IP address is PC1 and the destination address is now PC0. So this is the beauty of Packet Tracer. Not only can we build our own networks, but we can visually see how those networks and protocols are behaving. This will really help when it comes to solidifying these technologies. Of course, that was a very basic example of how Packet Tracer works, but you should now have the tools to go out and build your own bigger and better networks. This video is part of our full CCNA course, which can be found in the description. So go ahead and check that out. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really does help this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.